Ciao bella, ciao bello, hello Marco Mengoni, it is William calling for movie vlogs and I am so excited to watch Marco Mengoni's performance from San Remo 2023. He of course dominated this year's competition, winning every night, slaying the media, slaying the demoscopico, slaying the public vote. He truly is king, returning 10 years after Eurovision 2013 in Malmö in Sweden. The song is Dua Vita, Two Lives, Daban. You guys, hey William. Shall we talk about it? <laughs> Let's, Let's do, do this. this. All right. I was sort of in and out of San Remo this year because they don't always follow the schedule and I was real tired. So this is my first time properly listening, hitting play. Okay, oh, blue, blue, blue. They love him. They're already the screaming. audience loves him. Beautiful mm. voice. Love the masculine look, the tender voice. Great styling. Vulnerable, authentic. God, he hasn't aged in 10 years. If anything, he looks even better. I like fine wine. So handsome. Nice mixing with the backing. It's almost a whisper. All right, we're going somewhere. Take me there, honey. Oh. It's so melodic. What a heartwarming melody. I love this, actually. Smooth. Flowing. He's giving us so much life and so much heart. Mm, he's angry underneath it all. I don't speak a word of Italian. Oh. Sleep, sleep, sleep. But I connect with this. He's so emotive. It feels like a dream. Okay. Boom. A little bit of a production change. Which was needed. There's depth there and he's very expressive. He undresses you with his eyes. Straight up. I'm naked right now. There is an emotional journey. I want this to be bigger though. I need it to be bigger. This has got a very sing-along quality, you know. I can imagine lighting up our phones in Liverpool. God, he's into it. This man is a killer performer. Okay, we're climaxing. We're climaxing. Well, you see it, you feel it. Yes, Whitney Houston. Mariah Mingoni. This is so classic. Oh. This is actually beautiful. Oh. Well. I said yes. Yes. Woo. Beauty with a purpose. Oh my God, okay, two lives? I would take half a life. Half a life as Marco Mengoni would be a full life. This man is conveying so, so much with this song. I'm in two minds with this. On the one hand, I love that you know what you're getting. A classic Italian ballad, beautiful, melodic, emotional, sincere. The language flows, it's so smooth, there's nothing rough but he does add the grit with his emotion. You see his face when he reaches cl the climax point, he's almost sort of like, his eyes are gonna pop out and you see the color change and that's really powerful. This is very powerful. However, there's something about this that's holding me back. It's like, we've heard, you know, with Les Inciale, for instance, his 2013 song, we've heard this type of music from him before, we have. And so I would sort of love 
to hear something different. I would actually, and in fact, he himself has said he may not take this to Eurovision. Let's actually read what he said. I'm reading from the Weeby Blogs website. He was asked at a press conference, are you going to compete with Dua Vite in Eurovision? He said, I will think about it starting from tomorrow. It can either be Dua Vite or I don't know, the song that might win the selection to go to Eurovision. I will think about it from tomorrow. The point is, He's been to Eurovision before, and I think he knows, he knows that he could win Eurovision with his talent, his following, his appeal to international audiences, but he had to win in San Remo first. So he had the classic Italian song and he won, and now he can go to the recording studio and see if he can do something that might appeal even more broadly internationally. Um, of course, let's be fair. Most Eurovision voters won't necessarily remember him from Eurovision past, so they're starting from zero. It's a blank slate, tabula rasa, all that. Um, but even so, I don't know, I feel like he can give us something more original, is what I'm trying to say. Because this song, while it does progress and it does take you on a journey, it is a subtle journey. It is a subtle journey, and I think he can give us something more high impact. This is not shade, because this song, as it stands now, will come top ten. This is like, you know, with the juries, they'll do great, with the public, maybe less great, but it will come in the top 10, maybe seventh. But why would Marco Mengoni go for seventh when he can go for number one? Italy has what it takes to win. People love Italian language songs. People love Marco Mengoni. Give us another song. I would fully, fully back that. At the same time, this song is clocking in at 3 minutes 50 seconds in the video that I watched, and so obviously he's going to have to shave it down to 3 minutes, and it will be a stronger song. It will be more compact. The slow build will be less slow, because obviously if the song is truncated, you're going to reach your climax faster. Yes, you're going to reach your climax faster, and so it makes the song more oomph, pow, pow. Um, so in some ways, the Eurovision version of this will actually be incredible. There is a lot to unpack here. First of all, we're going to have to lose a minute. You know what? The four minutes flew by. It didn't feel like he had overstayed his welcome. Th there's a very, um, you know, he pulls you in, right? And he takes you on a journey with this song. And I really felt like I was on a journey. But here's the thing. He's now even considering a whole new song altogether. I really like the song. I mean, many Italian entries, in my opinion, have been so overinflated over the years. I think that this does sustain its hype. I actually really like this. And I think it does rival L'Essenziale as well. But if there's one thing that we know since my man won the third series of X Factor Italy back in 2009 is that he does write good songs and he does connect with a stable of really good songwriters. I am convinced that he can pull an another, another amazing song out of the bag. He just needs to go into the studio, be absorbed, be inspired and he can slay with it. So if he's feeling that he can do better, why not do better? I really like this song. And although this is my first reaction, the first time I'm hearing about the song, I have read quite a bit of narrative about what the song is about prior to this first listen. And, you know, it, opinions are divided on this. Many of his fans feel that it's about two human beings who try to reconcile with each other, they find each other, and then they lose each other. They align like planets, brushing against each other, and then wandering back into the universe. Certainly, this was the opinion of Wiwi blogger Chris Senzaka, who strongly felt that this was how he connected with the song. Mark Mangoni, however, has released a statement which does delve into it slightly differently. He says, the song is about human relationships that focus on the intimate relationship with one's self. If you go through difficult experiences and you go on an intimate journey of self-discovery, there comes a point when you have to honestly accept what life offers us without thinking of, should we, could we, do we, 
but to intensely enjoy each and every moment as if it were the last. And of course, most importantly, to accept mistakes as moments of growth. So that, you know, but the sentiment here filters into both worlds. Hearing this narrative and, and kind of calling back into the song, a part of me just feels that there's a very liberating feel about it. I'm listening to music. It's, there's a, there's a sense of release with this. Release, connect, embrace. Release, connect, embrace. That's what I draw from this. And this is beautiful. I want to read some comments from the Wee Wee Blogs website. Let's start with Alexis Mateo fan 45. Bam! Honestly, I wouldn't be upset in the slightest if all along this was his plan to go to Eurovision again. Give the San Remo public the San Remo bait the song they want, then go into Eurovision with whatever you want to represent your artistic sense in the fullest. Soldi and Ziti Abuni are clear outliers in the list of winners, and we can't count on an entry like those to win every year. Props to Mingoni for saying he'll do whatever he feels best about and not feeling bound down to the network's antics. Amen. Next up is Jake. Why are people so down on this song? It's miles better than 75% of the songs already chosen for Liverpool. This song competed against 20 other songs from some of Italy's biggest acts and won every single night of the competition. Italy's songs, particularly ballads, have never had an issue with Televote at Eurovision recently. He's famous throughout Europe. This song will be top 10 easily. I'd rather listen to this on loop than one minute more of Croatia or Romania's songs. This is Andrew Brown. I always find for some reason when an Italian entry is cut to meet the three minute criteria, it loses something. I know the rules are three minutes. Last year, Brivity lost something twice for me. The three minute rule in the re-edit and on finals night, I could hear the audience singing more than I could hear Mahmoud and Blanco. Ben says, really hope he sticks with Dua Vite. It'd be such a strong entry. I suspect he will stick with it. To which Ben replies, Sorry, but it is a boring song. It would not get enough public votes. Benito Camello says, We all know that Marco could do way better, so it's nice to see him considering a change, but at the same time, it's always weird to see a winning song not making it to Eurovision. And Fast Food Lover says, Sounds like he wants to win since he's considering the international fans who would be voting for him come May. That's great. And of course, I hope and expect he will keep the song in Italian, but if you translate the lyrics, they are quite beautiful. And this is just like a really rough Google Translate. We are the only ones awake in the whole universe, and I still don't know your desert well. Maybe it's somewhere in my heart where the sun is always off, where sometimes I lose you, but if I want, but if I want, I'll take you. We are stuck in time, which lifts the streets with the sky one step away from here. We are the monsters and the fairies. I should phone you, tell you things, tell you the things I feel, but I'm out of excuses and I have no defenses anymore. We are a book on the floor and an empty house, which looks like ours. Coffee with lemon against a hangover, blah, blah, blah. Point of story is it's dreamy. It is so dreamy. So Dua Vita is two worlds and we're not always very binary, you know. Sometimes we get greys, it's not always black and white. And sometimes we move out of black into white and white back into black, whichever, you know, I mean, these are not very PC friendly, but do you get the point that I'm trying to make here? Um, and sometimes decisions are not clear and sometimes decisions that we make, we have to revisit those decisions and reevaluate those decisions. And sometimes this can also be an internal battle. It's not always, opposing factions and whilst I don't speak a word of Italian hearing that and hearing the melody here and the sentiment and the facial expressions that Marco Mengoni emotes when delivering this song um you know th th this is a realistic battle that I feel has been explained well I feel like this is storytelling that also allows me to connect with my own narrative and my own experiences and my own stories. And if there's one thing we know, back in 2013, Marco Mangoni can perform and he is sassy and he is serious when he needs to be. Fun fact, when I interviewed Marco Mangoni for Wee Blogs back in 2013, I don't even know if that interview is up,
he is so sassy. 10 years ago, I'm congratulating my man for slaying the cover of Vanity Fair. You know what he said to me? Which one? I've done at least two covers. I'm like, check you out. Obviously, I'm talking about the very new one, which you're on now. And he's like, he just wanted me to know that, hey, he doesn't just slay one time. And this is relevant because he has come back into San Remo winning the whole thing. And he was one of the quickest confirmations we've ever had where he says, uh-uh, hold up. I must see you in Liverpool, united by music. I will be there representing Italy yet again at the Eurovision Song Contest. This is a man that is used to televised shows. He won X Factor, which is a televised show back in 2009. And he has done lots and lots of things on television, you know, and lots of performances on television. So yeah, he understands camera and he understands music. Whether or not he'll change his song for Eurovision remains debatable. I'm saying this, I support either decision. Two worlds, do we go with this or do we come up with a new song? If you go with this, this is definitely slaying. First of all, Italy doesn't have to battle for a spot in the grand final. It's already granted that. But I think more to the point, this is a top 10 finish. This is strong. But, you know, top 10 is not the same as bagging the whole trophy. So if you have a song that can push you up, the, you know, higher up the scoreboard, I say go to it. Go to that recording studio and see what comes out of it. Meanwhile, check out Marco Mangoni on Pinterest. If somebody comes to me and says that he's not on Pinterest, well, here's the thing. I think he should be because Salvatore Ferragamo to Prada to Gucci, he wears it all and he slays wearing it all. And whilst you're there, check out We Wee Blogs on Pinterest. Devin, we are not on Pinterest. Well, that's what we think. What do you think? Do you think Marco Mingoni should change his song for the Eurovision Song Contest? Or do you think the revamped three minute edit of this is enough? Let us know here on Wee Wee Blogs. And we will see you later.